Lorene Scafaria, and we are here to talk about Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Ever since I saw this movie, I've been raving about it and wanting to talk to anyone about it, but no one's seen it, and so I guess I've you're, seen it. you're the I've perfect seen it. person to talk <laughs> yeah. to about this movie. Right. <laughs> uh, where did you get your inspiration to write this story? It's so philosophically profound. Um, gosh, uh, well, a few different spots. I mean, obviously in the late 90s, there was sort of a a world of end of the world movies that were kind of coming out and um, all focusing on, you know, stopping uh, the the destruction from happening. And, and I was really interested in kind of honing in on the individuals themselves and what people would do in this situation and, and kind of tell a more intimate story with that kind of epic backdrop. Um, so um, so then I just started to explore like, you know, what, what kind of characters would be interesting to sort of see in that in that scenario and, and that's how I stumbled upon, you know, Dodge and, and Penny. Did you have Steve Carell in mind for Dodge? I didn't I didn't think he I could didn't. do something that amazing. Oh, this movie is amazing. Oh, thanks. I mean he's he's incredible. I mean as he's one of those comic actors who's a, a, a true actor. I mean you you can see the nuance and everything that he does on the office even. I mean you can watch him in an episode go from you know, zero to sixty to ten to seventy, to, you know, and, that. and so I, I always thought he was um, just so gifted in that way, and to to get to see him in something, you know, a little more guarded and a little more um, dark, obviously, yeah. um, was exciting for me. I I feel like I've been writing that character for so long. I, I've written so many scripts that um, sort of explored these types of, you know, these sort of archetypes. This kind of guy who's sort of sleepwalking through life and is in need of an awakening and um, and the sort of free-spirited girl who it would take to kind of pull him out of his right. shell and so um, so I'd say since the first script that I was writing like that I've had Steve Carell in mind I just never imagined that you know we'd get him for this um, but he was he was much more in my in my brain I, I don't usually write to an actor or anything like that but but um, he's someone who's, you know, uh, he's always represented that kind of every man to me, right. who's, uh, who's also a man. You know, he's a man, oh, man. an every man, yeah. <laughs> did, did you uh, have Keira Knightley in mind for that role as well? You no, paint such I never a beautiful imagined. picture of romance oh, in this movie. That's so nice. I, I never imagined that we, again, I, I couldn't imagine we'd get people like this, and, um, and, I, and I wasn't really picturing, you know, an actress right. in the part, but, um, but once her name was brought up, I was like, oh, this, is, this would be so amazing to see her in such a different kind of, of role. And, and I really thought she's, she's, such a, she's such a charismatic light of a person that I thought, oh, she's the kind of person to you know, light a fire underneath Steve Carell, <laughs> that she seemed like the, the appropriate match for him, even though they're obviously un an unlikely sort of pair. Um, right. But I like the idea that they'd be people who pass each other in the halls all the time and you know, it's not some obvious soulmate right there before you, and that it would take something like this to uh, to have them see each other, you know, in a, in, a, in a new way. Yeah. Which scene was the hardest to direct, or I guess the emotionally wrought scene? I mean, the emotionally you? wrought scenes were, were tough, but they're so great that, I mean, my job was to stop crying and <laughs> try to direct them. Um, but no, I would say things like the riot. The riot was a really tough thing to direct. I mean, we were, in you know a downtown city, uh, there were cockroaches and um, rats and Gee. pimps throwing glitter and walking <laughs> through them. Um, yeah, it was like a it was a pretty wild scene. And then we have all these extras. I mean, who were telling them to be as violent as uh, you know stunts would allow, and um, and they took it to heart. So the guys were were really crazy. I would say by you know halfway through filming all of that, the the extras and the pyrotechnics and all that kind of stuff was. Uh, was you know out of my depth, but um, but yeah, that was that was a pretty challenging scene, I would say. It's set in such an eerily near future, right? <laughs> it, yeah. What was your your purpose, or yeah? I mean, I what never want wanted to. to yeah, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to make a Futuro movie in that way, and sort of. Um, I, I doubt we could have even afforded to <laughs> minority report it or anything, but. Um, but I always like the idea that we're we're sort of on the cusp of it, and and this kind of thing can happen any time. And, um, and when I walked out, I was just tears and <laughs> just like, who am yeah. I? Oh. <laughs> who am I? <laughs> <laughs> but great in a great way. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. No, I I mean I think like the idea being that hopefully something uplifting can come out of uh, um, you know a, a story like this that 
um, that's something that starts with the worst news ever and of course our main character's wife leaving him yeah. um, and the idea of you know dying alone being something that is is a, a scary thought um, and hopefully you know not dying alone is right. the uh, is the goal <laughs> yeah is the attempt anyway um, but yeah that was that was that was the hope is, is to leave people even if they're crying <laughs> hopefully some kind of uplifting feeling comes comes with that and and that you know the the aftermath could be thinking about this in a different way and I think in the final moments between Penny and Dodge, uh, she's looking at him with the tears in her eyes, and she's like, I thought we would save each other. And he says, we did. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> this is sort of out there, I guess, but, yeah. but still pertains. Uh, whose eyes would you want to be the last you looked into? I, I know specifically who it would be. I, I, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, well, my dogs. <laughs> my dogs would be there. No, there's a, there's a, there's a fella. I, I wouldn't mind. Ooh. I wouldn't mind. Currently. I mean, you know, it could change day to day. <laughs> but, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind those eyes. Well, thank you so much for talking to me about thank this you. amazing movie. It's Thanks amazing. So much. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Nice talking to you too. Nice talking to you. This is Lauren Zakaria with Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Go see it June 22nd.